Hey, I'm Esther Smith, Doctor of Physical Therapy, and this is Edwin, rock climber. And we're going to be talking about Dupuytren's contracture, which is a condition that affects the palm of the hand, and it actually can affect anybody, um, but it more frequently happens in people who have repetitive type activities with their hands, um, musicians, laborers, rock climbers, and we want to talk about what it is and some options for self-treatment. And Edwin actually has this going on and um, what happens here at the palm is that collagen builds in such a way that it develops these cords in the fascia of the palm of the hand. And the more severe that cording is and those adhesions, the more that they kind of develop and bind, uh, you can have the potential to lose some range of motion and some strength in the hand. And we want to try to make that so it doesn't get much worse, right? So prevent worsening if you already have it. And then also share some ideas of maybe how to prevent it from happening at all if you can catch these types of um, adhesions or symptoms really early on. Using a technique called dry needling is another way to illuminate the anatomy here. So we can take and insert a needle and stimulate this muscle belly, in this case the flexor digitorum muscle. And you'll see that I'm way up here with my stimulation in the muscle, but I'm causing twitching and gliding to happen at the palm through the flexor tendons. So that's just to show you that this is the type of place upstream that you would want to release with your massage techniques so that you can get some release of the binding and adhesions that occur with Dupuytren's contracture. We can also take the needles and stimulate those lumbar cone muscles and illuminate where they live. So we have the needles inserted um, on the back side of the hand in the lumbar cone muscle belly and when we stimulate their action, you're going to see that the hand closes and opens and closes with its contract relax. So these strategies should work both for um, Dupuytren's that's been around for a little while, and then like in my case, I was rock climbing just this last week, and I felt something pop in my palm, and um, I had some swelling in here, yeah. and I'm handling an acute palm injury, which you might have had before these cords really got hardened and developed. Mm -hmm. And so we want to manage this acutely really well to prevent something from happening. Um, Dupuytren's is generally hereditary, so I don't know if I would be as likely to develop the same type of contracture of the fascia, but I'm going to be sure to take care of it um, just in case, right? And so yeah. we're going to look at some really good self-treatment strategies. fascia that we're talking about in the palm, a lot of that fascia actually originates all the way up in the arm. And particularly for the palm and the hand, the fascia of the forearm, um, most, mostly this palmar aspect of the forearm or what we call the flexor part of the arm um, versus the extensor part is going to be contributing to the, to the Dupuytren's contracture. So if we go upstream from the hand and we release this muscle tissue and the fascia up here, we could assume that we're doing something good to loosen it also in the hand. Mm -hmm. What we want to be careful of is not doing too much massage and digging around right in the palm of the hand because that can actually lead to some inflammation and it might be counterproductive. I actually tried scraping the the bumps and the stuff that I noticed here just kind of with a knife and after scraping it it sort of swelled up and got irritated and wound up getting worse after that. It was like counterproductive. Gotcha. Yeah and that was a good idea because usually scraping techniques work well for a fascial problem, right? Or yeah. like adhesion or scar tissue. But in the case of Dupuytren's, since it stimulated, the, the cording and binding is stimulated by inflammation, we don't want to create any more local inflammation. So let's use this arm aid tool, which we really dig. Um, it's a nice self-massage tool. A lot of rock climbers have one of these. If not, um, maybe consider getting one or something like it. 
because you can use this advantage of this lever here to squeeze and just have these nice little massage elements working through the fascia and the muscles of the forearm. And you can even be out here at the hand just like gliding your fingers into a fist and opening. You can go back and forth and feel how if you pin the tissue up here and then apply stretch, that's a nice pin Ooh, and nice stretch. stretch. Yeah, or active release. You can do the, the steam rolling, mm -hmm. um, which is called circulatory okay. massage. Yeah. So a lot of our soft tissue work will be upstream from the contracture, but then we can use another tool and be more local, but you yeah. want to kind of target it differently. So go ahead and use this. You don't have to use a tool like this. This is just a finger massager, tongue massager. But um, the idea here would be to not necessarily roll over the tendons and that collagen um, binding, but instead to get into the muscle tissue that's in the palm of the hand. And there are muscles uh, in between the long bones of your fingers in the palm called your lumbricals. And they actually close the fingers and they're really part of our grip. Um, and so they can become overused or injured. In fact, I think that's what's actually injured in my palm is yeah. lumbricals. So I would take that tool and instead of scraping or creating inflammation, actually just go and create pressure and just kind of a kneading type massage through the lumbricals. Another really cool activity for the lumbricals and for Dupuytrens is this pen rolling technique. Mm -hmm. So you just take um, any thickness pen, sometimes you need to start like with a fatter pen like a sharpie or a marker or work your way down to this type of ballpoint pen or a pencil and so when you have your hand shaped you want the whole back of the hand flat all the way to this row of knuckles and you want to keep that shape as you roll the pen up Makes just sense. all the fingers working equally not your thumb you're gliding the tendons and you're exercising those lumbricals and it can feel really good. And it be, does feel good. Yeah, yeah. cool. Relieving to some of that congestion in there. What I really like is, is working this top side muscle group into extension, which is like pulling open of the, the hand and fingers and pulling back on the wrist into this extension position. So you're just going to center your fingertips halfway through the width of the band and then grab the ends. Like you're trying to reach out and grab a climbing hold or an object. Another one I like to do with the band is one for the flexor side. So we're going to be doing the Popeye curl. So again, you'll place the band at that center point in the width along the tips of the fingers, grab the ends, and you curl into the band, curl all the way up like Popeye bicep curl and then eccentrically, slowly, slowly control the unfurling and the spreading out of the fingers a little bit into that stretch. Nice. And then from that point, also start to curl, dig into the band elastic, and come back into your Popeye curl. This is a nice warm up to yeah. pre-activity, and it's a little bit more focusing on gliding and lengthening the tissue eccentrically than just passively trying yeah. to stretch it. So along those same lines, you can take resistance bands that are a little bit more specific just to the fingers. Um, these are power fingers. I like these a lot. You want to try this one? Yeah. You're going to just get all fingers in there. And you can use, you know, a rubber band off of a broccoli, you know, batch at yeah. the produce department too, if that's all you've got. And what we're going to do here is we're going to hold the extension, the opening and wrist pulling back position for 30 seconds. And again, try to center your elbow crease upward so that you know your shoulder is in an open position, even though you're turning your palm down yeah. and now you're holding an extension because essentially that's what has to happen when we're gripping something, right? Yeah. Is we have to balance our grip with the extensor so we don't just collapse like this making sure all the fingers are evenly open, the thumb is pulled back even from this knuckle, mm -hmm. kind of a little bit pulled into that same extension. The wrist is an extension. 
one of my other favorite extensor exercises is holding some weight. You get to choose the weight. The weight that you'll choose is one that you can hold for 30 seconds. And we're going to try for three reps of 30, so you have to kind of get used to th that amount of volume, right? Mm -hmm. So you're going to position your arm on your thigh, or you can use the side of a table or chair. Mm -hmm. Again, try to position that elbow crease up, and be really particular about that, because that's going to recruit your shoulder rotator cuff. Okay. And then you're going to go palm down. But try not to let the upper arm bone get drugged down with yeah. what the forearm is doing. Yeah. And, and developing that type of differentiation and the mm -hmm. strength there is going to be really important. So then pull your wrist back just a tiny bit into extension, and that's going to be your hold for 30 seconds. Okay. Yep, keep the wrist pulled back just a tiny bit. And then up here in the shoulder, keep spinning open into external rotation without shortening your side waist too much. Okay. So keep your trunk nice and symmetrical even though you're on a squishy couch. So open this up a little bit. Yep. There you go. Uh, we're going to hold load for 30 seconds okay. in two different grip positions. One's going to be this open hand crimp position. If you're not a rock climber, you might have to um, change this up to something that makes more sense for you. But for us climbers, holding an edge makes a lot of sense for how we might get some nice, long, almost like lengthening load through yeah. this palmar fascia and for this flexor tendon muscle system too. So an open hand edge held for 30 seconds and then also looking at a two finger pocket hold that's going to really bias the two fingers that are, are really a part of Dupuytren's, right? Yeah. Um, definitely the middle and the ring and, and definitely the pinky, but that's going to get captured in the long hold and then we're going to bias these two with the pocket hold. I like to use um, a tension block like this made by tension climbing. You've got a nice 20 mil edge to hold for the open and then you've got a nice deep two finger for that one. The cool thing about this is you can hold it by your side, you get to decide exactly how much load, and you get to measure it over time, mm -hmm. too, versus dealing with the hangboard for this and um, and having your body weight already be on you. It's yeah. kind of nice. And this just allows you to have a real long arm position with everything well aligned. So your idea here isn't so much about your finger strength as much as it is about feeling like you're getting this lengthening long duration load. We know that that helps to remodel collagen and fascia and so we're going to use it in this case for that same reason. So the weight we're going to choose for this type of loading is one that's appropriate for you to hold for 30 seconds. And you should be able to pick this up right away and do it cold without much of a warm up so it's not going to be very heavy. It's like in your wheelhouse. Okay. And you want to feel like you're approaching fatigue at around 30 seconds or just after, and you just hold for the 30 seconds. You rest a minute or two, do three rounds of 30 seconds, rest two to five minutes, and then do the second grip position. Perfect. Okay. So we have it attached to a kettlebell, and you're going to lift it like it's a heavy weight because you want to just protect your back and your shoulder and everything. So it's a little bit of a deadlift type lift. And then 30 seconds. How does that feel on the palm? Feels like a stretch. Okay, good. Yeah, really nice trunk position. You've got your upper arm bone oriented right and then just a neutral grip through the forearm and hand and a nice long open grip on a big edge. And so do you feel like this weight is good for that two finger position as yeah. well? Okay, yeah. we're just gonna make sure we keep the other fingers straight so that we protect those lumber coals. Okay. Because actually if we split our pocket and we curl the other fingers in, that can be um, a risky position for the lumber curls. Okay. And the flexor tendon system. So here we are for another 30 seconds in the two finger position. Good mechanical tension stretch feeling and that you're getting tired around 30 seconds but it's not slipping you're not failing